it's that time of the year! This is a late list. I know everybody's gotten their lists out before me, but I finally have time. Finally have time to do my top 10 best movies of 2016 and top 10 worst movies of 2016 lists. I will also be doing a list for my top 10 most overlooked slash underrated films of 2016 as well as my list of top 10 most anticipated movies of 2017. Those should be coming out within the next few days so look out for those. Okay so before I get started with the list there's a couple of things I want you guys to know. First and foremost this is the most important one. This list is my opinion. This isn't a fact that these are the 10 best movies of 2016. This is just my list of what I thought was the, were the 10 best movies. There will be some honorable mentions on this list that I will mention. But they didn't quite make the list. However, the, like I said, my own opinion. Feel free to agree, disagree, whatever you want to do. That's totally fine. However, what I won't tolerate is arguments in the comments section arguing about why mo why this film is better than this film. It's everybody's opinion. Please respect everybody's opinion. Thank you very much. I'm a full-time student in college and, a, and I have a full-time job. I didn't get to see all the movies in 2016, so some of the more critically acclaimed ones that could potentially be on this list if I really did like them, like Hacksaw Ridge, Arrival, I didn't see those. They're not going to be on here. I'm sorry, I, you know... Uh, not saying they would be, but could have been a good possibility if they were. If I had seen them, those will not appear here. Finally, these are not reviews. These are just summing up my thoughts on these movies and what I think about these movies. If there are links to my reviews, that in, they are movies that I did review, some of them, not all of them, I will post annotations over the posters so you can check out those reviews. All right, so without further ado, let's get into the list. I can't wait to talk about these ten. Here we go! First, we have some honorable mentions. Doctor Strange. Don't Breathe. Moana. Zootopia. Green Room. And Star Trek Beyond. So those are my honorable mentions. Now we're going to get started with the list. Alright, clocking in at number ten... I feel like you knew it was inevitable. If The Force Awakens was my favorite film of 2015, then Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, definitely had to make this list. Did not think it was as good as The Force Awakens, but hey, a lot of people who are outspoken that are against the prequels believe that this is the prequel that Star Wars needed, and, you know, I, I accept the prequels for what they are. They're not good movies, but I accept that they're part of the Star Wars saga. Guys... The second half of this movie alone is worth the price of admission. The film really overcomes some pacing issues from the first half and the second half of the film. You got some really, really great space battles. A character that shows up for two scenes and kicks ass. A very iconic character at that. Great way to start off the Star Wars Anthology film series. You have two Star Wars series going now. You have the Saga films and the Anthology films. If this one wasn't good then I wouldn't care. But it was. And it was awesome. That beach battle... <whistles> damn. Number 9 is a film that to me, when you think of a western set in modern times, this is the film that I'm gonna think of. Hell or High Water. Water was a film I didn't get to see in theaters, and god damn it, I wish I had. This movie redefines the modern western genre. Like I said, when I think of westerns, this will be one of the ones that I think of. It's not not a western per se. I mean, there's nobody going around on like horses and with like revolvers killing people. But the fact is, this is set in the west and it's got a really good story with good characters and good motivations for those characters and a good performance from Jeff Bridges. Can I actually understand the damn word of Shane in this movie? This film has been compared a lot to a Coen Brothers movie named No Country for Old Men. This one is a million times better. No Country for Old Men is boring as shit. I'm sorry. I'll just say it. I'll flat out say it. I did not like No Country for Old Men. I thought it was awful. 
This movie, when I heard it, I was like, eh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to like it. This movie's not as slow. It's not as boring. It's really, really well shot and well directed and well written by the guy who brought us Sicario. That tells you a lot. Number eight is one of the most disturbing movies of the year. It's also a movie that was announced like one month before it actually came out. Ten Cloverfield Lane. Ten Cloverfield Lane just makes this list for its shock value. God. I got disturbed watching this movie, and then the final act of this movie really shows you why it's called a Cloverfield movie. What really makes it stand out is the fact that even though that final act of the movie is so different from the rest of it, it's in the whole movie's intense, and that final act of the movie doesn't detract from the other two-thirds of the movie, which are build up to that third act and just disturbing and creepy and just ugh, gives you that feeling of intensity and it's intense to watch a well done 10 cloverfield lane for a movie that was announced like one or two months before it was even released number seven had to be on here perfect valentine's day movie to take your girlfriend to teach her about god's perfect idiot deadpool was everything you wanted in a Deadpool movie. Now, I was one of those people that was worried, especially after what we saw of Deadpool in X-Men Origins Wolverine. I wasn't sure that they could pull this off. The opening credits alone proved to me when I saw this in the theater, I was like, yeah, this is going to be one of the best of the year. Really was. Deadpool's himself. He's the merc with a mouth. It's awesome. Just... I, I'm not even going to explain anymore. It's awesome. It's super fun. That... Everything that happens in this movie are just like, this is the shit that can only happen in a Deadpool movie. Breakfast. Most important meal of day. Here, have protein bar. He's gonna do a superhero landing! Superhero landing! Ah, oh, classic. Number six on my list is, unfortunately, a movie that a lot of people don't know about. And that is The Nice Guys. To me, The Nice Guys is what I would call a film. It was, to me, Russell Crowe's comeback. He had made some pretty bad movies in recent years before this. And this, to me, was his comeback. It was him acting again. Ryan Gosling, not a huge fan of Ryan Gosling. Killed it in this movie. This is a film that takes place in like the psychedelic era of the 1970s. And it's a murder mystery... Sadly, like I said, not a lot of people know about it because it's a very artsy film and it's very funny and I have it on Blu-ray and I've watched it and I, I even though I had seen it before, I was I was still dying laughing. There is not one person who I have spoken to that has seen this movie and did not like it. Everybody who has seen this basically like loves it. It's a great film, it's just not a lot of people know about it. Warner Brothers did not do a good job marketing this film, which is a shame, because it's great. I love this film. Basically, what I'm telling you, watch The Nice Guys. <laughs> Number five is another one that a lot of people don't know about, and that is Nocturnal Animals. You have another great performance from Jake Gyllenhaal. Michael Shannon gives a great performance in this movie. Amy Adams is really good, and the... All the movies she's been in for this entire year. Eternal Animals is a strange movie, but that's what makes it stick out to me. I love hard to understand and trying to figure out to understand movies. This is an artsy movie. This is a movie that I would call a film. And it definitely deserves that title. Coming in at number four, you're never going to want to fly an airplane ever again. In one, whether you're flying one, whether you're a pilot, passenger stewardess, whatever the hell it is, that is Sully. Sully is a film I just saw like four days ago, and it's a movie that really flew under the radar. Tom Hanks is so good in this movie. It's directed by Clint Eastwood, and he does a really good job of taking a real-life tragedy and turning it into a film through flashbacks. The flashbacks I thought were going to annoy me, but the, the movie itself, that's the way it's presented, and it did a really good job of presenting that. And there's a really deep story at the heart of this movie, and it really worked, and I loved it. It was 
Yeah, again, not enough good things to say about Sully. All right, down to the top three. My third pick is was actually higher up on the list. It was actually number six, and I moved it down to three. I really thought about it. So here we go. If you're wondering why you just heard the Avengers theme, there's a reason. And it's because my number three choice is Captain America Civil War. America Civil War is like the ultimate superhero fight movie. It achieved and really captured what, what a superhero fight movie should be. Something that another superhero movie in 2016 did not do. Civil War is really strong on heart and emotions. You understand why Captain America and Iron Man are fighting each other. Their motivations are clear. They disagree on one topic. The better part of this movie is, is that it's not just an Avengers movie. It's actually a Captain America movie. If it were an Avengers movie, it would have been called Avengers Civil War. The core of this movie revolves around Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Kudos to them for keeping it like that and not letting the Avengers get in the way. Not one point in this film where you are undecided as to who to root for. I don't think you're a real Captain America Civil War fan. I'm, if you like the movie and you're like, oh, I'm Team Cap, I'm Team Iron Man. Yeah, no, you are you gotta go back and forth. Alright, getting a little dark, just turn the light on, sorry. Um, didn't realize it was that dark. Uh, we're down to my number two now. My two favorite movies. It's gonna be tough. I... Couldn't decide. I, I I had my mind made up about my number one for a while. I think you guys are really going to like it. But first, we got to go with the number two. All right, coming in at number two, my number two movie. Number two. No, just kidding. That was an Austin Powers joke. Uh, coming in at number two. Really great adventure movie. Kubo and the Two Strings. The Two Strings, I literally just watched like last week, and this was like the Legend of Zelda movie that we're never going to get because every video game movie sucks, but this is the closest thing we're going to get to it, and it was awesome. I was behind I was behind Kubo the whole way. You are rooting for this kid the entire time. There are two really good supporting characters in this movie, and it really gave me a new appreciation for stop animation. Stop animation has never looked so good. It was masterful in this film. I really loved the animation in this film. It looked awesome. Good original story with heart, emotion, really good characters, and just the type of animation that really makes me... I've never seen The Nightmare Before Christmas, but it really makes me want to watch more stop animation movies. That's what Kubo did acting great action scenes it's more geared for adults than kids but both adults and kids can love this movie and that's what i really loved about kubo all right this is it my favorite movie of 2016 we are down to my number one selection for best movie of 2016 like i said you might not agree with me but for me this was it number one on my list was wait for it wait for it wait for it the jungle book yes the jungle book is my favorite movie of 2016 i saw it and i was immediately blown away this movie is filmed in real life locations i believe with some of the best motion capture work of the year just the technicality of the film puts it to number one. How can you make a movie look this great and be this great when you only have one live action character? Acting for all these different animals is top notch. Bill Murray as Baloo just nails it. There is not one sequence in this movie that bores me. Whole thing is exhilarating, it's exciting, it's intense, it's for all ages. You appreciate what Disney 
does with their films now. Their live action films, turning all of their 90s cartoons into live action films. This is going to be with Star Wars and these live action films of their 90s cartoons. This is like the golden age of Disney right now. Rare occasions do child actors really work in a movie. This kid that played Mowgli. Awesome. That concludes my list. Stay tuned for my list of the top 10 worst films of 2016, top 10 most anticipated films of 2017, and the top 10 most underrated films of 2016. You can find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, if you're on YouTube, there will be a title card at the end of this video where you can click on our logo and subscribe and go insane with the mag guys.